Yesterday, when I was preparing for St. Um, Joseph's Men's Prayer Group, as I said in a video yesterday, I was just looking up the readings. I was looking at the Gospel of St. John that will be read this Sunday. And I just happened to realise we'll be reading Corinthians 1, chapter 6 this, this Sunday. And then it struck me, this is the only Sunday in over three years that this chapter is read and it's not even the full chapter but it's the chapter that's read and for people that don't know sacred scripture very well 1 Corinthians chapter 6 that particular chapter is loathed by certain elements in the church who hate it being used they say it's a clobber chapter it's a clobber passage when people quote from from 1 Corinthians chapter 6 you know, there are some people that get annoyed um, because there in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, St. Paul is saying, do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? And then he goes on to quote various people, fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, male prostitutes, sodomites, thieves and uh, the greedy, drunkards, revelers, robbers, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Now, this isn't Robert Nugent quoting this text. That's the text of 1 Corinthians 6. And I'm, and I'm actually reading from Bishop Barron's Word on Fire. Um, uh, the Word on Fire, the, the, the letters and revelation. So that's his, the translation that's being used, being used there. And again... Anyone looking at my channel might say, Robert, you're very heartless. Do you not have compassion on people? Why you, this, this, this is a hard teaching to, to, to call people like this. You know, everybody sins. We all fall short. Yes, but there is the truth that we have to align ourselves to. And in the spiritual life, if you have a good spiritual director, he will lead you progressively on a path of purification and sanctification to work on yourself. We don't. Like any gym instructor, you don't go into the gym, you know, if you're going to a good gym and you're getting a good trainer, well, he'll want to help you and improve you. And he's not going to leave you in the same state as you were when you signed up. Otherwise, you'd arrive at the end of the year and says, look, I've spent a couple of hundred euros going to a trainer, going to a gym, and I'm no different. Well, the gym instructor will give you instructions. He will lead you on that. But it's up to you then to put your will to what he is saying so that you can see the improvements. And it's the same in the spiritual life. You know, we have truths that we need to align our lives to. And in this momentous week in the Catholic Church, the church is getting a warning this Sunday, Saturday, because you'll have the evening masses. So from Saturday onwards and Sunday, the church will get their warning with 1 Corinthians chapter 6, which is the only Sunday in three years that 1 Corinthians chapter 6 is going to be read out at masses around the world. I checked that. Um, maybe somebody correcting me, but I went through all of the lectionary readings. And this is the only Sunday that 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Now, this comes on the back of the week where we had the the Cardinal, Cardinal Fernandez's book coming out and he's not standing over it. And I really don't want to get into that debate. But we also have on the back of this clarification on the declaration coming out you know no we're not we're not nothing's changing we're not blessing anything it's just a, a, a 10 to 15 second blessing don't read too much into it you know marriage is still the same the deposit and then we have this confusion popping up we said well if nothing is changing why why are we in such confusion why the need for clarifications on a declaration where you said there was no clarifications needed on the declaration it us laity can see there's confusion here. And certainly the bishops can see there's confusion. We see bishops against bishops, cardinals against cardinals. Well, look, you have St. Paul to deal with now, this Sunday. You have St. Paul to deal with. You have your warning there. Whether we like it or not, this is the truth. Scripture. This is what we found our theology on. You know, it's not a clobber passage to say drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Adulterers, male prostitutes and so on and so on. I mean, we, 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 have, to, we have to show people 
the truths of our faith th that will benefit you, that will help you to see to live your life better, more in peace, free. Um, and again, you know, we all fall short of this. I certainly did. We all fall short, but we know we have to convert our lives, change our lives, and and turn our lives to the faith. You know, push our push our push our um our will into this process of of becoming temples of the Holy Spirit, because St. Paul says, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God and that you are not your own, for you have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. And, you know, what did what did Christ do in the temple when, when he walked in there and he saw it being used for purposes that it wasn't? Um, meant to be used well he got the whip out it was one of the rare occasions where we see our lord getting angry you know and we are we are we are called to be temples of the holy spirit i mean saint paul is is writing this inspired by the holy spirit inspired by the spirit of christ you know he's he's living in the spirit he's writing this inspired by christ you know saint paul was this persecutor of the church um he stood there while saint stephen was being being stoned to death so he was the, he was persecuting the church christ appeared to him uh why are you persecuting me he comes to to christ he changes and he receives christ's spirit and he becomes this great evangelizer this great apostle and this these letters they're not just Saint Paul speaking to us. The, the, this is this is the spirit, Christ Spirit speaking to us as well, the Holy Spirit. Because if you go to the next chapter, actually, I was just thinking, and you go to um, one Corinthians seven ten, and he says, uh, uh, "To the married, I give this command, but not I. No, sorry, not I, but the Lord. Not I, but the Lord." He is speaking in the name of the Lord. I give this command, not I, but the Lord, that a wife should not separate from her husband. But if she does, let her remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband. So, you know, St. Paul speaking, not I, but the Lord. He actually says those words. And so the church, you will get your warning this Sunday, Saturday and Sunday. You know, you can't, we can't turn away from the truth. The truth of of Bible, the gospel, the the New Testament, the Word of God. This is what we found our theology on. This is what we found. Our, we don't create declarations with no quotes to Scripture. Has anybody noted that declaration that uh, Cardinal Fernandez had had? I heard one commentator said, "Well, he didn't quote anything in there, but it's implied in this part of the document where he's is mentioning it." Okay, but. It's, there, there's certainly no quotes to St. Paul or any of the letters in the New Testament. I stand corrected, guys. The Magisterium, when they're pu publishing uh, encyclicals and um, declarations and documents, you give your reasoning for what you're, what you're, what you're talking about by, by usually building it on, on theology. And you don't just completely develop a, a declaration. I mean, I'm not a theologian, so I, I have to beg forgiveness. I, I prefer some some seasoned scholar and theologian would actually give a good reading. But I've been looking at the different discussions. I saw a discussion between a Franciscan and two Dominicans in England. And even I was listening to the, these three learned priests one Franciscan, two Dominicans. And, I, and after the whole discussion, I said, well, I'm none the wiser, guys. All you've, all you've done is to confirm what I already know is that there's confusion. There's confusion. Um, and so, you know, the church will get its warning this Saturday. The church will get your warning this Saturday. The first time in three years that Corinthians 1.6 will be read out in the church. It's ironic that that uh, our Archbishop Bugnini he kind of when he was when he was trying to shoehorn in this reading because he, he go it's it's one Corinthians thirteen onwards so the first part of the the chapter is missed 
and actually never read out in the church, as far as I'm aware. Could be wrong, but I went through the lectionary. But anyway, we have the second part of 1 Corinthians 6 being read out in the church, but not even the second part. It started off from verse 13, and then it kind of, oh, I'll cut out this bit, and then I'll, we'll go on to another paragraph. Cut out that. It's actually, it's actually interesting that we don't, we're kind of, it seems a little bit embarrassed to even read the second part of 1 Corinthians 6. But anyway, you know, you can't get away from the fact that 1 Corinthians 6 will be read out in the church this Sunday. We can't ignore the word of God. We can't ignore the truth that St. Paul is calling us to. If I was, I, the, the way I read this letter, I'm nearly sure he would have said this in person to people when he was preaching wasn't like he was just writing a letter. This sounds like somebody who obviously would have said this while while preaching and teaching to people when he when he when he when he traveled around preaching the gospel and teaching. He would have spoken like this. He was he really taught like this. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? That actually is cut out from the reading. <laughs> I just checked. For it is said the two shall become one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body. But the, but the fornicator sin, sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your temple is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you? And again, look, we don't. I, I, I often hear this discussion, oh, don't be quoting 1 Corinthians 6 because it's a clobber passage. You're, ma you're making people feel shame. You're making f people feel guilt that uh, you, you're not helping the situation by using clobber passages. Uh, this is what some Protestants do. They, they only just focus on certain passages. Look, every chapter, every chapter in the New Testament uh, on these letters has a place in the church it's part of our formation process you know we can't we're not supermarket catholics or we shouldn't be supermarket catholics i like this accept that don't like that don't forget about that rub that out one we can't be archbishop bugnini and i don't know if it was bugnini or not whoever was part of the of the group that formed this lectionary for the new mass um Whoever was part, you know, okay, you you want to expand out the, the scripture into the mass, which is a good thing. But, uh, well, one chapter six, what, what am I going to put in here? Well, I, okay, come on, guys. Let's get real. Uh, St. Paul gave us one, one uh, Corinthians six. He gave us the whole chapter. Read the whole chapter, you know. Um, but don't you read it. Confront it with your own life. We confront the truth with our life. How am I living my life? What is our Lord calling us to do? You know, you, you confront, well, I'm, I'm not living like that. I'm not living like that. So you're confronted with the fact that I'm not living like this and I'm confronted with the truth. Do I, do you change? Do you change or do you not? Do we continue to live on? I mean, so many people that are alcoholics, and, th and this ch chapter could speak to somebody who's an alcoholic. So many people that are alcoholics know that their, li that their life is, is not going right. They don't need 1 Corinthians chapter 6 to tell them that their life is not right. But listening to St. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 might spur them on to say, well, look, I have a problem with alcoholism. I am a drunkard. It's not helping me in my spiritual life. I c Maybe it's time to change. Maybe it's time to take a different direction. And another thing to, to, to understand, there is a universal call to holiness. We're all called to this. We, all, we have to preach this universal call to holiness, which was mentioned, by the way, in Second Vatican II. Nearly sure it's Lumen Gentium. Um, there is this, u this universal call to holiness. And there is this universal, you know, uh, this universal call applies to everyone. Whether you're gay or straight or black or white or European or African or South American, we're all called to digest the word of God and to, and to, and to change and to align our lives to that. 
You know, there is one truth that we align ourselves to. There is one word of God. We are all confronted by the same truth. And then so in, 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 in one way or the other, we're all called, you know, to examine our conscience and to say, okay, well, what can I do to better embark on this, this path of sanctification? Um, and again, so it's not just when you preach this, this isn't a personal opinion of Robert Nugent. Robert Nugent didn't invent this. This video today is not, is not some rampage out there to clobber people because we were called to love everyone but we're called to preach the truth in love or we should preach the truth in love we should present these truths that saint paul is offering us with love but say this this is the truth we align our lives to we have to align our lives to and uh, and why has Christianity been so divisive for the last 2,000 years? Why has the word of, of God been... Well, there's, there's this fight. There's always... Every generation has a fight. We know... We, we're, 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 there, 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 there's this... There's tension. Oh, well, but I, I'm, I'm happy living the life I live. I'm happy with my third wife or my, or my mistress or, uh, you know, my partner or... I'm happy sleeping around and I'm happy like this. Don't want, you know, what does, what does this word of God even imply to me? I, I don't, we, the kingdom of God, sure, heaven doesn't exist. You know, most of the world are atheists. Most people don't even go to mass anymore. So, sure. you know, we'll all, we'll all invent some excuse or not, not to listen to, to St. Paul in 1 Corinthians 6. But he's sending a warning. He is sending a warning to the church this weekend. St. Paul will send his warning to the church this weekend. Mark my words. Well, not my words. Mark his words. His words. First time in three years that 1 Corinthians 6 is going to be read out in the church. Maybe some brave priest will take the stand and just read from 13 onwards to uh, to 20. Not and Don't abbreviate it might scandalize some people but it's actually what saint paul said that's actually what saint paul said and as saint paul says himself not i but the lord not i but the lord commands this not i but you know we you know we can pick and choose we, you know and uh, and again look Look to the patrimony of the saints in the church. Look to what the saints have spoken over in 2,000 years. The, and the Philokalia and uh, the, even the Orthodox um, have that book, the Philokalia, but there's a lot of, of, of our saints in there and they speak about this. Look to the patrimony of, uh, of, of the saints and the teachers over the last 2,000 years, inspired by the Holy Spirit who, who speak you know, of this path of purification and sanctification. You know? Um, and I think if you meditate on this, you will see by freeing yourselves from what is stopping you moving forward, by freeing yourselves, you'd be a lot freer. I mean, you only have to speak to an alcoholic that's off alcohol for two or three years and say, would you regret giving up alcohol? No, they don't. Never said, met a person that's given up alcohol after a number of years said, no, my life's totally turned around. I don't have the hangovers. I have more money. I am uh, I feel healthier. I can sleep better. My relationships are better. And yeah, while, while that might be a secular reality, it's also a spiritual reality. You know, the two married up, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm a different person, you know. Um, and so, so, you know, look for good friendships. Look for authentic friendships in the Lord. Um, but let, let yourself be guided to the kingdom of God. You know, let yourself be guided by St. Paul. Read, meditate on what St. Paul is calling us to do. The church will get their warning this Saturday. You either listen to St. Paul or you're preaching a false gospel. It's not clobbering people. You know, that's what St. Paul calls us to. And again, this is, this is the translation I'm using. Um, and it's you know it's hard sometimes to to be confronted by this 
you know, especially when you read from 1 Corinthians 6 from verse 9 onwards, which a lot of people don't like listening to. Mm, that's 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 challenging. You're saying fornicators and idolaters and um, idolaters and male prostitutes and sodomites and thieves and greedy, the greedy, the drunkards, the revelers, the robbers. None of these will inherit the kingdom of God. That's a hard teaching. That's a hard teaching. Don't. And again, we're not. We don't throw this at people. This is for you to read. You know, read it in the spirit. Go and read it in the spirit. In the spirit of God. In the tradition of the church. Let yourself yourself be confronted with the truth. Not with what Robert Nugent is saying here. You confront yourself with the truth. And see what you think. Um, does this align with the 2000 years tr traditions and faith and morals of the church? You know, let yourself be confronted. Again, we're all sinners, but we're all called to be confronted with this truth. Everybody, we're all... We're all called to train ourselves up a little bit in the spiritual life and to move forward and to advance, to know what stops us. To know what stops us and what stops us advancing in the spiritual life and to know what helps us to advance in the spiritual life. You know, you know, purification, contemplation, illumination or unity, of, unity with God, the process of theosis, deification. You know, we're all called to embark on that. And it's very beautiful if we do. You know, um, and so um, it will be an interesting weekend. It will be fascinating to see what priests will be saying on the pulpit this weekend. Um, I don't know if in the old mass they had this, uh, this, this chapter, but I think it's very timely. And it's, I mean, you couldn't plan this. You could not plan this, that 1 Corinthians 6 is coming up this Sunday, Saturday evening, Sunday. You could not plan this. When you see what has been happening in the church this week in particular, you could not plan this. And that's the warning. It's like St. Paul steps in at the right moment. He gives you the warning when well, you're getting the warning. You can, you can listen to what the Holy Spirit is doing. Or you can reject it, but you uh, you can't ignore you can't ignore the tradition of the church. We can't ignore sacred scripture. That's what our theology is founded on. That's what it's founded on, you know. Anyway, pray for the church. Um, pray for the church this 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 coming year. It's an exciting time to be Catholic, and our Lord is 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 working in the church. The Holy Spirit is working. You know, we're being guided. We're being led. Um, but um, it was me thinking, you know, <laughs> talk about a warning this weekend. There you get it. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. There you have it. Listen to St. Paul. Compare St. Paul against Cardinal Fernandez. I don't like creating division. Okay. Would compare them. You know, I'm, I, I, I don't, and you never know. The Holy Spirit, what could, what could happen in, in these in, in Cardinal Fernandez's life? You know, we could be changed. And again, I don't like dividing the church or pointing fingers, stuff like that. But I mean, the confusion is there, guys. That's to be noted. The bishops and cardinals are already showing it to us. Still, you know, Cardinal Seurat has been rallying the African bishops against this document and against the clarification. I mean, the confusion is there. Not a bit there to note, but you know, we'll we'll see what happens. God bless you. Take care. Bye bye.